Saudi Arabia just shocked American scientists with this. Located on the map, you can pinpoint the vast expanse of Saudi Arabia. Covering a staggering 2.14 million square kilometers, this nation is almost as expansive as Western Europe and only slightly smaller than the United States. In September of 1932, King Abdulaziz, also known as Ibn Saud, declared Saudi Arabia a sovereign nation. Despite its size, this arid land is without a permanent river due to its meager annual rainfall of fewer than 150 millimeters. However, in the desert regions of the kingdom, a strange phenomenon is unfolding. Are you interested to find out what is happening? Well, sit back because this is the spot only for you and let's get started. In the early 1960s, Saudi Arabia had only 400 square kilometers of the productive ground. Today, the kingdom has a vast agricultural network of peculiar looking fields that allow farmers to cultivate a wide range of crops and fruits. Absolutely stunning is the transition of an arid desert into a lush forest. But how did Saudi Arabia accomplish this? At the beginning of the 1960s, Saudi Arabia had only 400 square kilometers of fertile land. Saudi Arabia is now home to an arable land area of 35,000 square kilometers, making it bigger than the Netherlands and three times the size of Qatar. It's unclear how they doubled the amount of farmable land in such a short time. The past three decades have seen exceptional growth in Saudi Arabia's agricultural sector, and this growth has been remarkable. This is an impressive accomplishment for a country that only receives a total of four inches of rainfall on average annually, making it one of the driest countries in the world. When it comes to oil reserves, Saudi Arabia is far and away the world leader. The Dhamam oil field in Saudi Arabia was discovered in March 1938 at a depth of 1,440 meters. About 17% of the world's proven petroleum reserves are located in this country. In Saudi Arabia, the price of a liter of potable water is higher than the price of a liter of oil. The Gawar oil field is the world's largest, with reserves of around 75 billion barrels. The oil field is equivalent to 4,770,897 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of reserves. Simply, Saudi Arabia has a serious water shortage. Wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and flowers are only some of the present exports from Saudi Arabia. Once widely consumed in Saudi Arabia, dates are now mostly grown for international relief efforts. What caused this to occur? Except for a narrow strip of coastal territory in the southwest, most agricultural activity on the Arabian Peninsula was limited to the cultivation of dates and small-scale vegetable production in an oasis. The locals relied on these little plots to grow their food, and they sold any excess to the caravans that passed by. The 1970s saw the beginning of agricultural development in the kingdom. The government has launched initiatives to support cutting-edge farm machinery and rural infrastructure. Because of this, the output of all basic foods has skyrocketed. Due to the country's massive production of food staples including beef, milk, and eggs, Saudi Arabia no longer needs to import any of these items. Wheat, dates, dairy products, and other things including eggs, fish, and chicken are being exported from Saudi Arabia, allowing the country to rely less on food imports. By 1985, local farms are already supplying domestic demand for several formerly imported commodities because of the program's early emphasis on extensive dairy, meat, poultry, and egg production. Today, Saudi Arabia is home to some of the largest and most technologically equipped dairy farms in the Middle East. With a yearly milk yield of 1,800 gallons per cow, this is among the highest rates in the world. Private companies with government support are increasingly venturing into aquaculture. The number of fish farms, both marine and terrestrial, continues to rise. The majority of them may be found along the Saudi coastline of the Red Sea. The shrimp farming industry has benefited greatly from this. Located south of Jeddah, this shrimp farm is managed by Saudi Hydro and marine engineers and exports the majority of its shrimp to the United States and Japan through the Saudi Arabian National Shrimp Company, Al Rubian. For instance, the kingdom's rapid transformation from a wheat importer to a wheat exporter is widely regarded as a landmark success in agriculture. The first grain silos were constructed in 1978, and by 1984, the country is producing all of its own wheat. Shortly thereafter, average yields in the major producing regions of Tepoc, Hale, and Kazim reached 3.6 tons per acre, 
and Saudi Arabia began exporting wheat to 30 nations, including China and the former Soviet Union. Farmers in Saudi Arabia also produce considerable amounts of barley, sorghum, and millet. For the sake of water conservation, food production like wheat has been severely reduced in recent years. Due to advancements in farming and transportation, Saudi Arabia now produces more fruit and vegetables than ever before. Large volumes of Saudi Arabia's agricultural output are exported to neighboring countries. The country's most widely produced crops include watermelons, grapes, citrus fruits, onions, squash, and tomatoes. Tropical fruits are grown at the Al Hikmar Research Station in Jizan, which is located in the well-watered southwest region of Saudi Arabia. Some of the fruits that are grown there include pineapples, pawpaws, bananas, mangoes, and guavas. The agricultural revolution that has taken place in recent decades has made it possible for previously inconceivable indigenous cuisines to explode onto the scene. Dates continue to play an important role in the Saudi diet, despite the fact that they are no longer considered a basic food like they once were. Annually, around 500,000 metric tons of dates, comprising 450 distinct varieties, are produced for the purpose of providing aid to those in need. Thousands of tons of dates are donated annually to help fight hunger and malnutrition, primarily through the World Food Program of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. One such factory is located in al Hassa. Saudi Arabia is the second largest contributor to the World Food Program, and many countries have benefited directly from this assistance. The recent expansion of Saudi Arabia's agricultural sector can be directly attributed to a number of government programs, particularly the provision of interest-free loans and technical and support services. The agricultural sector has benefited from low-cost water, fuel and power, as well as duty-free imports of raw materials and machinery. In addition, the investment regulations enforced since April 2000 provide further incentives, including a tax holiday for international joint venture partners of Saudi individuals or businesses of up to 10 years. The Ministry of Agriculture is the major government agency responsible for carrying out agricultural policy by means of studies and instructional programs for farmers. The Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, or SAB, provides assistance in the form of subsidies and loans without interest. Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization was created in 1972 with the purpose of assisting the expansion of agriculture in the United States through the purchase of wheat, the storage of that wheat, the construction of flour mills, and the production of animal feed. Saudi Arabia has invested a significant amount of money in the modernization of the roadways that transport agricultural goods from the country to the cities. The government continues to offer help to new farmers who are pursuing initiatives that require a significant investment of cash in order to promote improved levels of both diversification and productivity. As part of the development aims to boost farm output, the government also supports and funds research programs targeted at producing new food crop types, improving yield, and breeding pest-resistant plant strains. These goals are all part of an effort to increase farm output. And these projects are the result of collaboration between Saudi Arabia's local farmers and the scientists who work in the country's agricultural research institutes. The Rub al Khali is the largest continuous sand desert in the world, and it is located in Saudi Arabia. Its size of 650,000 square kilometers makes it significantly larger than the combined areas of the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. The staggering height of the sand dunes is 250 meters in certain places. In addition, Saudi Arabia is the largest country in the world that does not have a significant river. The majority of the terrain was either fully or partially desert. In spite of this, the country features a long coastline that stretches from the Arabian Gulf all the way to the Red Sea. This helps to compensate for the dearth of rivers. However, as a result of the country's rapid economic expansion and the concomitant rise in water demand, fresh water is in short supply and commands a high price. As a result, the country has been looking into developing novel approaches to increase water supply and satisfy the ever-increasing demand. The population of Saudi Arabia relies heavily on water from underground aquifers for their daily needs. The water is stored in enormous reservoirs and lakes that are dug far beneath. In the 1970s, the government invested a significant amount of time and energy into locating, mapping, and evaluating the potential of these aquifers. As a direct result of this, tens of thousands of deep tube wells were sunk in the most fruitful agricultural and urban regions. A significant amount of water can also be obtained from the ocean. This is achieved by the process of desalination, which transforms salty ocean water into drinkable water for human consumption. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is responsible for the majority of the world's desalinated water production. 
Saline Water Conversion Corporation has 27 desalination facilities that together generate more than 3 million cubic meters of drinkable water each and every day. More than 70% of the water that is used in urban areas comes from these facilities, and a sizable portion of the water that is used in manufacturing also originates here. They also contribute significantly to the generation of electrical power. An increasingly important supply of water is water that has been recycled. The nation mandates that at least 40% of the time, water used for residential use in metropolitan areas must be recycled. Recycling plants have been built in Riyadh, Jeddah, and other important industrial hubs in large metropolitan regions in order to achieve the goal. This goal is to reduce the amount of waste produced in these places. Both agricultural land and urban parks can be irrigated using water that has been recycled from the wastewater treatment process. As a result of all these efforts, vast tracts of the desert have been converted into arable land that is suitable for farming. In 1976, there were fewer than 400,000 acres of arable land, but by the 21st century, there were millions of acres of fertile land. So what are your thoughts on Saudi Arabia's agricultural development? Share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and we'll be right back with more videos soon. Until then, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.